Um, mate, seven days ago, you were involved in a pretty extraordinary Premier League game, yeah. beating Leeds 4-3 in London. Yeah. You're now in the Middle East, and two days away from England's first game in the World Cup. That must feel pretty extraordinary. Yeah, it does. It's um, obviously a unique situation for us. Um, yeah, being obviously my, my third uh, major tournament of England, and obviously the first time in this kind of situation. But um, yeah, in, in 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 some ways, it's it's quite a nice for for me. Maybe not for the coaches, you know, and the managers, and tactically from that kind of that aspect of things, um, not ideal for them. They probably like to prepare us a bit more, but. For me, from a player's point of view, um, the quick turnaround is actually um, quite a nice thing now that we're here. We're just getting straight into it. Um, it's, uh, it's quite nice. I'm quite impatient, so it's quite nice to, to, be, to be getting started. Obviously, there are other aspects that aren't so great. Obviously, we've seen quite a few players miss out to injuries which they wouldn't normally have missed a tournament um, with. But um, yeah, now that we're here, I'm just I'm very excited to to start. It's clearly really hot, <laughs> whether you're walking around or, or, or training in these conditions. But have you been given any idea about how the air conditioning is going to work in in this first stadium, the Khalifa International Stadium, and, and kind of what impact that's going to have on the temperatures actually on the pitch? No, I, I know it exists, but I don't know I don't know what kind of impact it will it will have. I've I've never experienced it before, you know. So um, it, it's going to be a first. Um, I think. To be honest, it's it's hot, but it's not. I I, I think I've, I've been pleasantly surprised. I don't think it's too bad. And um, to be honest, I think the next World Cup's in America, and in the summer, I'm sure it's going to be hot there as well. So, as I said, this normally in the, this is normally a tournament that's played in the summer, and you know, in Russia it was hot. Um, I think the, 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 the I wasn't there, but the Euros in England that was that was hot in the summer as well. So, um, yeah, I think. Uh, we're fit and we're we're ready for that. Every every team's you know we're playing in the same conditions as our opposition, so it's the same for everyone. Bit of a gear change here, mate. Gianni Infantino, the the FIFA president, has has given a quite extraordinary news conference in the last hour or so. I don't suspect you've seen much, if any, of it. No. But look, you were very outspoken about Brexit. You grew up in Portugal. You, you made it very clear that you, you're very pro-European. You feel European. And I want to tell you something that Infantino said and, and see what you think of it, if that's OK. He said, in Europe, we close our borders. If Europe really cared about these people, meaning migrant workers, they could let some of these workers come to Europe. And you'll know that migrant workers is a, is a, is a real topic of, of controversy and, 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 and horror over here at the moment. Do you agree with Infantino there? What are your thoughts? Um, well, I haven't seen this. I haven't uh, seen or heard anything from the, the press conference you're talking about. Obviously, it was just mentioned to us, but I haven't ch had a chance to to see it. And I'd need you to read me that quote again because I can't remember what you've just said. Do you want me to look? If you don't want to comment on it, I appreciate it. Look, you're a footballer; you don't have to. But no, I think that's I think that's the, the important past. message for me. Is um, obviously for us is extremely difficult every day for all of us as players. We we come here and we know that these these topics are going to be addressed and it's a difficult situation for us um you know i was looking to i was looking today because i thought i'd probably get this kind of question and um uh the world cup was awarded uh here to qatar in 2010 i think and i was i was 16 at the time you know so it's very difficult for me to to talk on it because we as players have absolutely no say in where in where we play it's those decisions are made by people way above us um, and and obviously we're the ones that end up sitting here having to answer these kind of questions and it's a difficult situation for us for, for every not just us every team every every player is, is going to experience it throughout the whole tournament and it's it's this it's disappointing um, you know I think for us for me individually, I carry the values that I've been given by my family and what I've grown up in and the people that have educated me, I carry those values wherever I go and at the same time I respect everywhere that I go. And um, we've been here a very short time so for me it's important to, to, to live this experience and then at that point I think have a much better idea of 
what to say on it. Obviously, a lot of things have already happened, a lot of things that are very disappointing. And, uh, you know, those will always be in my mind. But um, I think as a team, like I said, individually, and I think as a team, we carry certain values. And no matter where we go, we'll carry those values. And at the same time, we'll respect everywhere we go. Um, so, yeah, it's difficult for me to talk about that kind of situation. Um, do, you, do you want to give us a bit more idea of, of what you found disappointing? Because uh, you said you said, they said this, there's a lot of things that you've seen that have been disappointing. Is no, no, oh, sorry, not seen the last couple of days. I'm talking about, obviously, what's happened in the building of the stadiums, for example. It's obviously, you know, <laughs> a terrible situation. Um, so, so things have happened in, you know, in the past. But as I said, us as players, we really have <laughs> no influence on these kind of decisions. And um, it's a World Cup, and it's a World Cup, and it's something that I'm extremely proud to be a part of. Us as a team, we're extremely proud to be here to represent our country, to play, to play football. You know, and at the end of the day, we are footballers. We're not. We're not politicians. I think Connor spoke really well the other day where he said we're not politicians, but we do have our values and we speak on them and we speak on what we believe in. And um, I think uh, that's the most important thing in always in a, in a respectful way. Thank you, mate. Sorry for putting you on the spot. Well done. No, it's OK. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Uh, sorry, I actually go to Jack Pitbrook next. Eric, how are you doing? Um, in the two England games you played in September, you obviously played in that role. You played for Tottenham in the middle of the three. Um, but three of the last four games for Spurs, you were actually on the right of the three instead. Yeah. Um, how do you find that that different role, the challenges with and without the ball? Um, yeah, obviously, obviously, I've been played in the middle for a long time. Um, obviously, yeah, for me it was a, um, just a different experience. But I played in that position a lot under, under Pochettino when I played for 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 Tottenham in a back five I played I played on always on the right so it wasn't a position that was completely new to me so um yeah I I, I think uh I can play in in any any position really in a in a in defense it's not sorry <laughs> Yeah, I'll play in goal if I have to. <laughs> it's a World Cup. Um, I'll take whatever chance I can get. I'll, yeah, it's um, yeah. I'm, I, I, as I said, I feel completely comfortable in in any position in defence, whether it's a yeah, what, whatever position. I'm. I, I believe in myself to be able to to play in anyone. Yeah. Experience are you able to offer to the young, to, to the younger lads? Um, well, I, th I think they might be young, but I think uh, they've already done a lot. Um, they've already lived a lot of experiences themselves. Um, obviously, for, for I don't know how many of the the boys it's their first tournament, but um, yeah, obviously living through the Euros. 2016, I was, I think I was 21 at the time. It was a great experience for me. Obviously, a very disappointing tournament for England. So, I learned a lot through that experience. And then, the World Cup in Russia um, was obviously a great redemption for us. I think from from where we came from in Euro 2016, and and since then, it's been there's been an upward trend. I think, and it's about trying to continue that. Um, yeah, to continue. I think. Uh, Gareth and, and everyone everyone that's part of the backroom staff since Gareth's joined have built a fantastic foundation for the for the English national team. And um yeah, it's about continuing with those principles and, and trying to trying to improve on them because there's always space for improvement and, and we can I think this team has a incredible ex space for improvement because of the age of so many of the players here. They're going to be a part of this this England team for for many many years. Hi, Eric. Alex Howell, BBC. Uh, you got into the England squad in September after a, a little break away. Was the World Cup in your mind from that point, and just how pressured did those Nations League games feel to you then? Um, yeah, obviously not being in the team for a while um, of, after the Euros was 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 tough for me, and I was extremely motivated to try and get back in and. And um, 
to try and to try and be here at the World Cup. You know, that obviously that was an objective of mine, but at the same time, during that time, I think I was just really trying to focus on Tottenham and, and playing well for Tottenham and trying to improve myself individually. And I knew I, I could only control the things that are controllable to me: being fit, um, playing well, and. Uh, I tried to control those as best I could. And obviously, we're all human. You know, we know there's a World Cup round the corner. We want to be a part of it. It's the greatest, you know, the greatest thing in football for me. So, um, yeah, I'm extremely proud and happy to be here. Was there anything specific you feel you did to get back into the England team? Play well. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I think we complicate things sometimes. It's that simple, really. You know, just to play well. Um, yeah, I remember. Obviously, my club manager, I remember at the beginning of the season, he said to me, you know, because I hadn't been in the squad in the summer, he just said, you've got you to play better, you know, and that's what I tried to do. Yeah. And you scored that winning penalty against Colombia in the, in the last World Cup. What are your memories of, of that time? Yeah, obviously, one of, one of the best, my best uh, memories in football. Obviously, my best memory in an England shirt. Um, being part of that World Cup experience in general, and then, and then obviously winning, scoring in the penalty shootout and winning a penalty shootout after so long was was a special feeling for all of us. And I think uh, I think if you look back, that game really propelled us. You know, getting over a lot of you know, getting through an, the first knockout um, stage, uh, winning a penalty shootout. I feel like we. We uh, we put a lot of things to bed in that game at that World Cup, and uh, so it was it was a special game. And obviously, the last time England were in a major tournament, they lost a penalty shootout. Would you be happy to step up again? Yeah, of course. If if, if I'm on the pitch and uh, there is a penalty shootout, I would I would I would, uh, I would never shy away from that. And off the pitch, there's been a lot of build up, and you've answered some difficult questions today. Has it taken away from it at all as a player, or is it? Just the excitement of a of a yeah. World Cup is everything. Yeah, of course it's taken away, you know, because uh, because we're sitting here talking about it, you know, instead of talking about football. So of course it's taken a lot of that away for us. Um, but we we can't hide from it. It's 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 uh, it's here, you know, and uh, so yeah, it, it would be wrong to to ignore it. And at the same time, it would be, you know, we're here to play football. I'm a footballer. I'm not. I'm definitely not smart enough to be in anything other than that, you know. So um, at the same time, I'm, I'm so excited to, to play football, but you know, all of those things will obviously be present at the same time. Hi, Eric. Um, how do you and the players sort of experience some of that negative stuff? Do you feel like the hotel gives you an environment where you can kind of forget about it and just focus on your football as well, or, or do you feel like you still find it from like social media and, and reading reports and stuff, or, or how do you experience sort of these negatives but balancing your job as well? Yeah, I think we have. A, I think we, as I said, I, th I think not much needs to be said or thought because me individually and I think us as a team, we have our principles and we have our beliefs and we stick to them. It's not like they're wavering, so those thoughts will always be there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a, there's a great atmosphere in there's a great mm -hmm. atmosphere in the hotel. We're we're extremely lucky, you know. We're we're, we're extremely spoiled. We have everything we need. Um, it's uh, it's 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 the best the best setup I've seen since I've been in England team, and um, so we're extremely lucky for that. And there's a fantastic atmosphere there. Um, obviously, a lot of the boys we've known each other a long time now, and um, yeah, it, yeah, I think uh, to be successful in a in a tournament, you really you really need to have in an international football, especially. I think uh, mm. that that atmosphere within the team and that camaraderie is is uh, is vital. Yeah, and I just wanted to ask one more. Um, Alex was talking about your penalty um, high pressure moment that you took on and, and delivered. Um, did the other boys sort of ask you about that sort of how to handle the pressure of a big moment and and is no. that something you talk about a lot because everyone else <laughs> seems to talk about it who I meet <laughs> yeah I talk about it all the time <laughs> no. Um, no I don't I don't I don't talk about it no one's asked me about no one's asked me about it um, Aaron Ramsdale's given me a bit of stick because he said it was a bad penalty but uh, I keep on telling him it went in so it doesn't really matter um, so yeah, I think I think 
we, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't really care too much about age and all of these guys. You know, they've they've already played in huge games, Champions League. They've, you know, loads of them, you know, have won won numerous trophies already. You know, and you look at someone like Phil, you know, or Mason. They've got incredible experience. They've been in high pressure situations, um, and they've performed in them. So. Um, I don't think there's any doubt in, in that kind of thing for me from about anyone and no matter what their age is either. Hi Eric, firstly congratulations on your latest high pressure win. Um, <laughs> so, secondly, I know you've said yourself your form wasn't as perhaps as strong as it could have been but watching the Euros from afar having been such a key part of Gareth Southgate's setup. How difficult was that, and did you think the door might be closed? Because there has been a Gareth Southgate seems to do this thing where he players drop out the squad, and then the conversation stops about them, and it goes to someone else. Did you fear that you might be in that? Yeah, no, I'd be lying if I said I didn't think that that was a possibility. You know, um, I uh, yeah, I, I, obviously those thoughts go through your mind. You know, when I missed out on the Euro squad, obviously one of the most worst moments for me in my career, but I always say, when I say that, I always say I must have a pretty good career, you know, if that's the, one of the worst moments. So, um, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just grateful to be here now. Um, it was good for me. In many ways, it, it was good for me. And uh, it propelled me to play, for me, like the best football I've played in my career. So, um, you know, there's always, there's always the positives to look from it. But obviously those thoughts crossed my mind. And as you said, there's, you see that with other players, you know, and and uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm very proud of myself how I managed to to fight my way back in, um, and uh, yeah, very thankful to to the people that supported me and helped me get back here. My family, um, the manager, and all his coaching staff at the club, and my, and my teammates at my club as well, because uh, it was special to me how they, how 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 supportive they were of me trying to get back in and. How they, um, how happy they were as well when I did. And because of the peculiarities of this particular tournament, there hasn't been that many questions about the opposition as a, as a team. Yeah. But I'm just wondering what you think of around when we're not far out from the game now. What what have, what areas do you think they're strong in? Maybe you don't want to say that, but what, what have you made of them from? I think that uh, well, if you look at their previous, they're like. Their previous World Cup results. You look at the their last two games. Um, firstly, any any team that's here at a World Cup is going to be a very good team. Um, I think the quality of football in general is is getting better and better, and the the depth of the the quality of the teams is getting bigger and bigger, or deeper and deeper. And uh, so I think uh, that's something that we're aware of. I think there'll be They'll be a very difficult team to play against um, for for different reasons. Obviously, they've got players with a lot of quality um, because you know players that play for big European teams. You know, I know obviously my connection to Portugal. Um, you know, you know Taremi that plays for Porto. So um, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of um, good players in the team, and and it, and yeah, as I said, it's a World Cup. So for them, like us, it means everything, and uh, every game will be very difficult. Hello, Eric. Hello. Over here. Louise, Stats Form News. I just wanted to ask you um, about the fan experience. Obviously, football is for the fans, and, and that's what we're all here for, to watch some incredible football. Yesterday, when we heard that they were going to be um, not being able to serve alcohol at some of the stadiums, and I would just wonder how the you feel the atmosphere will be at the stadiums, you know, the Will it be a party atmosphere? How will that be? And how maybe, you know, will that affect the, the fan experience not being able to um, have alcohol at the stadiums? Um, personally, I, I'd like to think that um, you can enjoy yourself with or without alcohol, first and foremost. Um, you know, that for me, that's important. And uh, I think Aaron Ramsdale replied very well yesterday. You know, it's up for us on the pitch to to bring the entertainment um i think you i feel that in any football game i play the entertainment comes from 
the style of the game, the type of the game that it is. So um, it's up for us as a team and every team in the tournament to, for us to bring great football, great football matches, exciting football. Um, that's what that's what's going to create a great atmosphere in the stadiums. Um, the football is is the most important thing to create that and players and fans feed off each other and uh, we have to be the ones to initiate that with with good football lots of goals hopefully um, being scored and not conceded but uh, yeah I think the football is 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 the fundamental thing in 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 creating that that environment you talked about your club manager helping you and talking at the beginning of the season he said you know you need to play better to get back into that squad but can you give us a little bit of an insight onto like what his thoughts might have been on on and how how you do that and and how you've worked with him and your relationship with him to to improve over the the first part of the season yeah no, no i think uh, i don't think he was saying i was playing badly the season before i think he was just saying you'd have to play even better um because uh, yeah last season i felt like it was especially since he arrived. As I said, I think that was some of the best football I've played and um, I feel like I've continued that this season. Um, but no, he, he obviously he's had a huge influence on me since he arrived and not just him, all of his coaching staff. Um, and yeah, he's, he's in, uh, it's difficult for me to pinpoint one thing because I think he's improved me in, in every way and I, and I really feel that. Um, and, and yeah, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of working with him and He's a he's a special manager, and um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm extremely grateful to be able to have had this footballing experience with him, and, and and still have it in the future. Okay, everyone, we'll let end the live section there, and we'll move on to a couple of minutes and bargain until 10 p.m. this evening. Start with Dan King.